Hi, and welcome to Bonita's Kitchen and thank you for joining us. We're excited to bring you to you today this tasty apple spice jelly. This is a recipe you can make in season or out of season. Right now, we have got ourselves a nice basket of uh, freshly picked apples and um, we pick them and we save them in a bin and I have them um, almost up till Christmas time. And then I'm going to infuse those apples with a nice blend of cinnamon and ginger and that's going to bring that up a notch. If this interests you, stick around and let's get started. First off, I'm going to show you the end result of this apple spice jelly. Look at the color. And this was locally picked apples. So, so delicious. We're going to be using four sticks of cinnamon. You could use more depending on how many apples you're going to be uh, boiling down. This is our fresh ginger that was frozen because I buy um, buy them when they're on sale and I just put them in my freezer chopped in cubes like this and then I take them out when I need them. And then we're going to be using sugar. I'll let you know the amount as we go. And the apples I'm using is the ones we picked. You can see the bruising on them and little specks. We'll cut that off and I'm going to show you how I'm going to cut these today. So now this recipe is for, I'm going to say, any amount of apples. Now this apple is no good here today, so we're going to toss him to the side. And we might have a few like that because sometimes these freshly picked apples that you get, you just don't know. This one is lovely. You can keep the seeds in or you can take them out. In my case, I'm going to keep them in because all this air is giving you that extra bit of pectin and that's what we need. I'm going to leave the stalks on there as well. They're already cleaned. Cut them into cubes like this, wedges, and I'm going to toss it into my boiler. I'll show you that after. I'm just going to do a couple of more here. See this one we can't use, and this is the glory of, I'll use that in my compost. This is the glory of when you get them freshly picked from the garden. Um, not my garden, we, we picked them from Raymond's cousin's um, tree and then a friend of mine told me about uh, a tree that he's seen when he was out for a walk that is abandoned. So I, I just said, okay, I'm off to pick from it. Look at the nice redness in this one. Isn't that ever beautiful? Okay, I'm going to continue cutting these and then I'll tell you a little bit more as we go. There looks like two different apples. I picked them from two different trees. But you can see a couple of bad spots on there. Could have been um, from, like you said, the little critters that wants to enjoy the outdoors as well. But that's fine because you want to cut that off and just eliminate that all together. You don't need it. And like you said, wash them good. That's all you need to do there. And then cut them in cubes. Well, this one I guess is a goner altogether, but not all of them is like that. If you're using store-bought um, apples, pretty much do the same thing. If any of them got any bad spots on it, cut it off. You could use a variety of apples. You can go to bright red ones and that way you got a bright red jelly or you can infuse it with a few plums. And I'm gonna show you that today because I got some plums there that my friend gifted me as well. I'm gonna put a couple in there because I want to have this a little redder than peach. And then peach, a little redder than rosé, I'm gonna say on that hmm. one. No, I got a peach, peach, what are they? Like, sure. yeah, we can have sure. a peach jello, oh, yeah, yeah, jelly. And that's all. Now I'm going to continue peeling these or just getting the bad spots off and getting it into my pot and I'll tell you what's next. One good thing about it, like you were saying, Bonnie, that you picked all of this from the trees yourself. Yeah. Like, so like, you know, this, if this you one come you across got the red a few bad ones, well, Oh, you don't mind that. Just cut, no. cut that off. Like you said, you're making a jelly. We're only using the juice of this today. If you want to know how to make um, the apple sauce or the apple butter, I'll share those videos with you and you could... Uh, you could use the remainder of this uh, mm -hmm. apples for that. But today it's just the apple jelly we're making. I'm using there probably 
between I'm going to say between five and ten pounds. It it varies. You could use a big old big old uh, baller full, a uh, twice the size of that, if you want to. But I like this baller because it got a nice thick bottom to it, and that's what we need. But for now, this is what we're going to do. I got a kettle air full of boiled water, and what you're going to do is going to cover the apples just about to the top of them. Now in this case, it's going to be a kettle full, I think. Yeah, mm -hmm. they're rising. So, you see them rising like that, then you can push them down. When they start boiling, they'll uh, start to fall apart. Now at this point, we're not going to be stirring or doing anything with it other than having it in the pot boiling. So I'm going to put it over on the stove and leave it there for about 30 minutes cooking. I don't want to stir it, mainly because I don't want to break those apples down to mush and cloud the, the broth or the liquid that's there. So we'll talk a little bit about that a little more. And when we got to infuse the ginger and cinnamon, I'm going to put it on my stove top. Now this is our apples and I never stirred couple of times I went like this just to keep them down in the pot. You don't want to stir them because you don't want all that mush to be going through the, the, the liquid. So it's done. My 30 minutes is up. After it starts boiling, time it about 30 minutes just till you see it mush like this and it smells amazing in there all mm -hmm. those apples. Eh, Raymond? Yeah. So I'm going to take this off here now. We're going to strain it through a sieve and then, uh, then I'll let you know the next step. At this point then is a good time to get those jars sterilized. I got six there. This may only use four, could use five, but I always put six on one cup jars and uh, have them ready. That's all you need to do there. So I find when I'm cooking these, um, I'm preparing other things. Like I'm getting my bowl and sieve ready to strain it through. You need a mason, um, a measuring cup, not a mason jar, me measuring cup to measure off the amount of liquid you got. Um, this, uh, sometimes I got a video up there that is time consuming because I let it go overnight and I'm straining it tr through a cheesecloth. You could look at that video, I'll share it with you. Uh, but this one, I'm only gonna be straining off the juice that I need for this today. And the rest that comes off from the straining, I'll use for something else, another recipe, etc. So all I'm going to do now is pour this out there. Be careful, it's hot. You can wait until it gets to room temperature and then start to boil again, or be careful. So this will start pouring it in. Now the handles on this boiler is heat proof, so it's not hot. Normally I would have to wear gloves. So I'm gonna strain it slowly, um, some of the the apples is going to fall out into it and then I'm going to dump some of that into the other bowl and just look I'm going to show you here now just look at the color of this delicious juice I don't know Raymond probably mm -hmm. can call me can you see I, it there Raymond I, see it I mean it's beautiful but as well you can infuse some other um, recipe into it which I might put in there some a couple of plums and just to make it redder but I'll show you that anyway so that's all you need to do there I think this is about all the juice I'm going to get out of this here now and like I said again um, I'm going to use all of this but that's not on this show that's if you wanted to make apple sauce or apple butter you can continue on with that now, this is my juice. I'm gonna strain this one more time now into another baller. This is the remnants of that, which I'm going to use later. And uh, so let's get at that. So I'm gonna strain this one more time into this bowl. I can't even see what I'm doing, but just to get some more, some more of that liquid off, um, clear the liquid a little bit. And again, you can do this through a cheesecloth, that's fine, and just to keep pouring it. And what we would do, it takes a fair amount off. What we need to do then is measure this. We need to see how much um, juice we got, so we know how much sugar to add. 
and that would be probably I'll strain it one more time through that so that don't hurt. Hey Raymond. No. Nope. Every bit counts. Can't go wrong. No. So without wasting it. That's painful. So I'll uh, I'm just gonna pour it in. Yeah. Yeah. Time consuming. It is, yes. Yeah, so there you go. Can you see this, Raymond? Uh, just one second. Okay, now I can see it. There you go. Alright, so this is one and a half cups there, but I'm going to strain it through here again to, to get it as clear as I can um, before we start boiling it. And remember, a quarter of a cup of um, a quarter of a cup of sugar to every one cup of juice. So this is two and a half cups. Now I'll pour some more again. So now that's two and a half cups. I think that was three and a half cups. So I remember saying three and a half cups. That's four and a half cups and five and a half cups. I might even be able to squeeze out another half a cup out of that there and to get six cups. Now I'm going to tell you what's next. So I'm just going to toss that half a cup in there. Now I was going to put in a couple of those plums that I got here from my friend. He picked it from his garden and um, I'm going to just freeze them uh, like this and then use it again at another, for another jelly. But it's too late for me to put it in now. I should have put it in when we done the apples, like cooked apples. So if you want to infuse a different color like this, a plum, a strawberry or whatever, cook it when you're cooking the apples. So right now I'm not going to do that. We'll stay with the recipe at end and we'll just have it coming out looking as pretty as that, which that's a beautiful color. So now what we're going to do is toss in there four sticks of cinnamon and two chunks, one or two chunks of the ginger and I took some of the skin off and we'll scoop that out after and we're going to get this cooking for about another 10 to 15 minutes to get the boiling going of this liquid and then we'll add in the sugar so that's six cups of liquid so with that said it should be two cups of sugar because that's a quarter of cup of sugar to every one cup of juice so, and it got to be what your measures off at the beginning. So now I'll put this to the stove top. So right now you can see that it's starting to boil. I'm going to leave it for a few more minutes until it starts to get that little gallop going there. And then I'm going to be taking out the cinnamon sticks and these uh, two chunks of ginger before they start to break down because I don't want for it to cloud my uh, uh, juice and as it goes all of this foam you're going to be scooping this off as this uh, boils as well but after the sugar is in and we'll talk a little bit more about that but it looks really good give it a couple more minutes probably five more minutes and then I'm going to take it out it smells amazing in there so I'm going to take out these two chunks of ginger and I'm thinking I'm going to take out two sticks of the cinnamon, but I'm going to leave those two sticks in it because I don't think anything is going to be coming off of that. Now, at the beginning of the video, I said, I think I said a quarter of a cup, but it's not quite sure. Uh, we're not sure, but, but anyway, yeah. it's a third of a cup of sugar per um, cup of juice. So, with six cups of juice that I got there, is two cups of sugar. So, I'm just scooping it there now. To get the other cup and then toss it on in but at this point is very important you're babysitting a little tiny bit you're going to be stirring occasionally because you're going to be cooking this juice now until it um, starts to concentrate and it's going to uh, probably go almost half in size and you don't want it to burn to the bottom uh, of the boiler. You got it on a medium heat and what I'm going to do is cook this until you, you see the, uh, the juice thickening off the spoon, a cold spoon, or my best bet would be um, 220 on your cooking thermometer and I'll show you that as we get closer. So stirring occasionally. 
So I took the two cinnamon sticks out that was left and at this stage you can see the foam starting. So scoop that off and just toss it over into a bowl if you don't need it. And as you see that happening, just do that and let it still concentrate there going down half the size and you'll see what that is as it goes and one good thing about jelly is very uh, forgiving if you end up um, bottling your jelly thinking that you got it at the right consistency and the next day it's still a little runny it's starting to set but not set put it back into the boiler and get it to that 220 Fahrenheit um, degrees on your cooking thermometer and as you can see it's boiling nice and I'm gonna let that continue doing that and then I'll check it. So as you can see it's starting to concentrate there a lot. Still a little bit of foam around the sides and on the cooking thermometer we are looking at let's see here now she's going to 215. 215 yeah. So we got about five more degrees on that. A cold spoon, you, uh, yeah. when you do that, and if it's not like totally running off, well, this is dripping, and then you you'll see that it'll go together. If it don't go together, it's it's done. I always like to go with this candy. Uh, thermometer or a cooking thermometer because you can get a little more accuracy but the spoon works as well and I've done that on quite a few of our videos you can almost tell when it's ready to bottle and again if you feel that it is and you bottled it too quick well and you always got room wiggle room now I'll check it again in a moment and then I'm going to bring it to my counter Apple spice jelly is ready to take off to the stove top. So I'm going to take that off now, bring it to my countertop and show you what it looks like. Yeah, now our baller is pretty uh, dark there. So I'm going to pour it into this dish and let you see it. And right now it's at the 120 uh, degrees. Two. 120? Uh, 220, sorry Raymond, yeah. two, 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 <laughs> jeepers, uh, 220 on our cooking uh, thermometer. Or if you wanted to use a candy thermometer, you could use that one and it, uh, it'll work as well. And, uh, and you can do the spoon test. You can also do um, the plate, the cold plate test. That would work. And I'm going to show you what it looks like. Make sure the, the rims of your glass uh, jar is nice and uh, clean. You're going to put this on finger tight and then you're going to put it back into your water bat to, uh, to seal. Now if you're only making a small batch like this and you don't want to water bath it, just keep it at your room temperature like this. They'll pop. If they don't pop, just keep them in your, uh, in your fridge. But uh, this is the look of them. This is what it looked like when it's set. You can see it there moving from the bottle. Now I'm going to open one of these here and put it on some bread and show you what that looks like. You can also see, just look, those are nice and set. And this one, you can hear that bubble there. So when it's set, you know that's down. I'm going to open this one here. Just hear that nice click there. I'm going to put some on. My bread here, just look at the texture of it. Isn't that yummy? Raymond, you like a little taste over there on a cracker? Why not? Just look. I, I'm thought, gonna I thought she was never going to ask. I'm going to give you a little cracker. Just look, like I got him like, on know, a diet here. Look. I'm the cameraman, but don't forget I'm the taster. Oh, you know you are. Mm -hmm. And it's got such a beautiful um, smell and taste of that uh, mm. cinnamon and the... Uh, of course, our ginger oh and, a, and a fresh ginger, Perfect. isn't it? Yeah, you want to yeah. use the fresh ginger because if you use it, the the powdered ginger, you'll cloud your jam, and you don't want to do our jelly. You don't want to do that. Now I'm going to have a little taste of this bread, actually, Raymond, with my tea. Oh my gosh, this fresh ginger. 
freshly baked homemade bread with that apple spice jelly. Yum. Mm. I know Raymond is waiting for the bread. <laughs> Not necessarily the cracker. Mm. Oh my gosh. I'm going to say two thumbs up. Drop the bread. Delicious. <laughs> and this this uh, uh, apple spice jelly is good for any occasion, but most definitely if you want to make a whole batch of them while you can get access to the apples and give them as gifts. Put them in baskets, your neighbors, your family, your friends. This will um, be a treasured gift for sure from your local apples or from your store bought. Now this is the... I guess the rest of the apples that came off, I put it through this sieve. I'm going to put it back on boiling after and put it there for my, um, I'm just going to do apple sauce. And this is my compost there that's left over that I can put out there. So everything is used. And my other apples is put in a vegetable bag. I'll put them into my fridge in the vegetable section and yum, I'll use them later. So this is it, it's as good as it gets. And I hope you get to make some this season or any time as well. We're gonna leave you the recipe. And under this video link, it either says more or see more, or just an arrow. You can go to our website, www.bonitaskitchen.com. You can follow us on our Facebook page or come here anytime on our YouTube channel. Of course, I can't forget to, uh, to give you my email address. That's bonnetakitchen at gmail.com because if I don't answer you as quick as you need to know on those links, give, send me an email. One of it will pop up and tell me to get going and answer it. Um, as well, we're not going to take any more of your time. We know it's precious. I hope this video tutorial is helpful for you and that you'll get to make lots of this delicious apple spice jelly. On behalf of myself, Raymond, and our team, and from our kitchen to yours, you have a wonderful day. And thank you for joining us. This one is mine, Raymond. <laughs> I got my plate just over here, so. <laughs>